Brad, TRT for Warriors, coming at you with a, another video. You know, I always get really interested when I'm in these different groups, and you end up learning a lot if you just, you know, end up studying and going through different things. Something that's always been really interesting to myself is that when it comes to dogma in hormone optimization in general, you have the uneducated, the somewhat educated, the uber educated, and then the, I'll call it the Grug Plumber approach. The Neanderthal, okay, I'm going to go look at stuff and find out, you know, what, what, what's the highest thing, you know, available. So something that was interesting for me is everybody kept saying, okay, well, this 100 milligrams to 200 milligrams or 300 milligrams, you know, if you're above 200, you're abusing, you're a steroid user, and you're, um, there's always this moral implication too. So this is weird puritanical moralization of like a dose, which is like weird. Like you, when you never do this to Tylenol or like if your doctor gives you like 50 milligrams of morphine, like you're, you're not going to moralize like morphine or something or like gabapentin. Like when you, when you dose gabapentin, you have like an initial dose of say 500 milligrams and you go up to like two or 3000, you know, essentially, and you get a steady state of medication. It you know gives you what it gives you, right? You don't moralize someone's dose. It's just strange. But then in TRT, there's this like moralization of like a specific dose. And they're trying to apply this to anyone who's seven foot tall down to the four foot tall guy. Like this doesn't make any sense to me. So I ended up doing some, some research and one of the first studies that I found was testosterone dose response relationships in healthy men by Dr. Basin, Dr. Woodhouse, Dr. Casbury. And when I saw this, I was like, wow, this is interesting. Like no one ever talked about like any dose response relationship, you know, things. So here's the abstract. Testosterone increases muscle mass and strength, regulates other physiological processes, but we do not know whether testosterone effects are dose dependent and whether dose requirements for maintaining various androgen dependent processes are similar. To determine the effects of graded doses of testosterone on body composition, muscle strength, muscle size, strength, power, sexual and cognitive functions, prostate specific ant antigen, plasma lipids, hemoglobin, insulin-like growth factor, 61 healthy men who are not hypogonadal, or regular dudes off the street, um, 18 to 35 years old were randomized, one of the five groups to receive monthly injections of long-acting GNRH agonists, that's a, a drug to, to suppress their testosterone, and then weekly injections of 25, 50, 125, 300 and 600 milligrams of testosterone and anthate for 20 weeks. Jesus Christ. Those dudes at 25, 50, and heck, even 125? Oh, Lord. <laughs> like, can you imagine the hell? Like, one, I don't even know why they did that part. That's just kind of strange because this is not steady state or like any sort of whatever. Um, but you got to be feeling like absolute dog shit. Um, energy and protein intakes were standardized. The administration of GnRH agonists graded dosages in the concentrations. Graded dosages resulted in mean NADR testosterone concentrations. Ah, oh, wow. 253, 300, 554, 1,345, and then 2300 um total testosterone freaking balls <laughs> you have to feel like absolute dog shit like one after that study i'm like I, i'm literally gonna wrestle my doctor to the ground and then the other one i'm gonna be feeling really happy and excited right there's 600 600 milligram gangsters out there like you gotta be feeling pretty good um fat-free mass dose dependent the dependently in men receiving 125 to 600 milligrams. They had a positive change in how much weight they gained. The changes of fat-free mass were highly dose-dependent on testosterone and correlated with 
the log testosterone concentrations. I don't know how to read that. I don't know what that means. Uh, 73 and 001 or something. Um, changes in leg press strength, leg power, thigh, quadriceps, muscle volumes. Hemoglobin, IGF-1 were positively correlated with testosterone concentrations, whereas changes in fat-free mass and plasma, high-density lipoprotein cholesterol were negatively correlated. Sexual function, visual, spatial cognition, and mood, and PSA levels did not change significantly at any dose. We conclude that changes in circulating testosterone concentrations induced by GnRH and testosterone administration are associated with testosterone dose and concentration dependent con changes in fat-free mass, muscle size, strength, and power. In conformity with singular linear dose response relationships, however, different, different androgen dependent processes have different testosterone dose response relationships. So the question I have for this is, okay, well, if your doctor gave you 300 or your doctor gave you 600 and you're part of a study, you didn't have any adverse reactions, you had some positive mood stuff, you lost some fat, and everybody has lipo HDL stuff that gets jacked up. So nothing really bad happened. And you just continued this. Okay, why is it abuse and why is it steroids? Like, no, this is not how it works. Every every drug has a steady state concentration. Every drug is an upper limit of a medication. And we don't have anything beyond these. We're going to go through a couple other studies, but there's no definitive X doses for every person. One of my friends is over six foot. He's on like a quarter of the dose that I'm on. And he feels like dog crap. Well, okay, you just increase the dose and, you know, he's six foot. We don't have like a milligram per body weight um, calculation that's standardized that you would have like for morphine, but we do have general ideas about how you just increase the dose and you just increase the dose from, you know, 100, 200 milligrams to three or six. I mean, if it's okay for those group of patients, why isn't it good for everybody else? So here's another study. This might've been in the same study, but I'd like to go over it. So effects of super, super physiologic dosage of testosterone and muscle strength, muscle size and strength in normal men. Athletes often take androgenic steroids in an attempt to increase their strength. The efficacy of these substances for this purpose is unsubstantiated. However, okay. We randomly assigned 43 men in four groups, placebo with no exercise, testosterone with no e exercise, placebo plus exercise, testosterone plus exercise. The men received injections of 600 milligrams of testosterone or enanthate or placebo for 10 weeks. The men in the exercise groups performed standardized weightlifting exercises three times weekly before and after the treatment period. Fat-free mass was determined by underwater weighing. Muscle size was measured by mag MRI. And the strength of the arms and legs was assessed by bench press and squatting exercises. Results. Among the men in the no-exercise groups, these given testosterone had greater increases than given the placebo in muscle size in their arms. Greater increases in strength in bench press and squatting exercises. The men assigned to testosterone and exercises had greater increases in fat-free mass, muscle size, quadriceps areas, than those assigned to either no exercise group and the greater increases in muscle strength, bench press, squatting exercise capacity than either no exercise group, neither mood nor behavior was altered in the group. Super physiologic doses of testosterone, especially when combined with strength training, increases fat-free mass, muscle size, and strength in a woman. It's kind of like a no, like a, like a, <laughs> I was expecting more meat to that. Okay, there's like a fancy, Here's like the fancy article where it's got like all the stuff and, um, okay. Let's see, anything good in here in terms of, a 
concentrations of total and free. This is the first time I've actually seen like a free testosterone in any of these studies, by the way. Like every one of these studies I see is just all total. It's just like, why are you even doing that? Like, okay, you're the expert here. Like, why aren't you doing that? I guess maybe they're like reducing costs, like not run an SHBG, not do the calculation. I guess in some of these, but I just find it strange. Um, let's see what the table looks like. Free testosterone. Ooh, set. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Seven. I don't know. I'm not sure if this is NGDL. Where's the thing? And, oh, it's PGML. Uh, I don't know if this is seven or if this is 79, which this always makes me mad because we should always be using the same units of measurement. And I don't know why they made this mistake, but I guess 79. So maybe this is 90. I don't know about that. I'm not 100%. Well, actually, what was their what was their total? 3000 maybe. And then 2000. Okay, something like that. I mean, who knows. The the stuff makes you some and I'm not, I'm not calculating it. <laughs> it's not going to happen. <laughs> not in the mood to do it. Um Doses of androgenic steroids in previous studies were low, mostly because of concern for potential toxic effects. Like, toxic effects how? Like, what are you talking about? Now, I guess maybe, like, in some of these studies are using, like, nonsense uh, medications that are just going to cause, like, wreck havoc in your cardiovascular system, which... The things that are not testosterone, like, you obviously want to be careful with those, and they're... They're also probably meant to be more utilized in like a microdosing system, anyways. Like something like Trembolone or like these other derivatives are actually probably really safe if it's in the micro dosages and not in actual milligrams. But obviously, bodybuilders are going to be doing what they're doing because they're doing bodybuilding. But um, these medications could be used in a, in a microdosed way for the average person. It's just not being used because of how unwell tolerated the drug is just by dosing it in such a high amount. In contrast to our knowledge, the dose of testosterone nanthate administrated in the study, 600 per week, is the highest administered in any study of athletic performance. Undoubtedly, some athletes and bodybuilders take even higher doses than those we gave. Furthermore, athletes often stack androgenic and anabolic steroids, taking multiple forms simultaneously. We do not know whether still higher doses of testosterone or the simultaneous administration of several steroids could have more pronounced effects. The absence of systemic toxicity during testosterone treatment was consistent with the results of the studies of the contraceptive e efficacy of the hormone. Okay, any other meat in here? So, when I really was confused by, well, this whole super physiologic thing is nonsense. So, now, Dr. Basin actually works with Dr. Tom Travison, and Dr. Tom Travison is the guy who, one of my previous videos, is where our assay comes from that actually does our testosterone. Well, his group of people in that assay is only a thousand to three thousand people. And like, it's not indicative of like the entire society. So, and it's also only Europeans as well. And like they're sedentary and like unhealthy. So like the super physiologic term doesn't mean what people think it means. And then like this dose of 600, it's like, well, okay, if you give that to like a person who is healthy, okay, well, then that's one thing. But then if you give it to somebody who's unhealthy, the drug's not going to work the same way. So it's like this this concept is being lost, and then like the average, like your average doc doesn't know, and then your average person doesn't know either. So it's, it's just frustrating. And reading these studies, just like, okay, this is driving me crazy. And when you're looking at it, it's it doesn't mean what people think it means, basically. Um... Oh, here we go. Here's something with a a dose response of a 2300. It sounds fun. 
What was the dose that they use? Is it 600 milligrams? Okay, so this is a different, this is a same, like in the, in the bulk of the studies, there's like another paper that they did. And, um, so fatigability is a word. Didn't know that. Learned something new. Um, okay. Uh, okay, and this is just, it's, it was reported in other, other things. This is just the same article. But I wanted to go through this, you know, these, these articles are very, very interesting. And it's important to read them on your own. Because if you just listen to any doctor, um, they're going to tell you what the standard of practice is in their local area. Well, their standard of practice in their local area is wrong. And it is also predicated on what the pharmaceutical company will pay. And then also on what insurance carriers will approve and then what their, what their society that they're bound to um for their their education will allow them to do so your logical society will have one endocrine society will have a different one family practice will have a different one um every one of these things has a different guideline and every location that you go to has a different guideline as well so it's kind of the beauty and the insanity of our system but it also treats patients like absolute dog shit and one of the reasons why I wanted to put this out as well is because when we're talking about traumatic brain injury patients, one, we should never be afraid of dose. And my personal opinion is that we should be optimizing and going to the maximum tolerated dose possible for all TBI patients. And one of my reasons for that is, well, if you have somebody who has systemic muscle loss, who is going to be going through physical therapy, has a bunch of stuff they have to do, and needs to be able to reverse a lot of the problems with their other illnesses, specifically in their gut microbiome and their indigestion, food stuff, and uh, repairing muscles and and uh, just healing different parts of their body. Well, it doesn't matter if you're at like 100 or 600 milligrams. It matters about their response to the dose, and it matters that they're actually going to be recovering. So, you know, I understand docs who want to be careful and that sort of thing, but rules are made to be broken. And when it comes to TBI, there is no rules and there is no one single treatment. And the general concept that I'm coming up with is that maximum dose efficiency is what we should be going for. Um, maximum quality of life possible is what we should be achieving. And that means, well, if patients also have to take things in their own hands. Well, that's just what they have to do. Um, because the system wants a doctor to look in the PDR and the physician's desk reference and wants to look at a research um, printout and it wants you to give the drug that's in the printout. Okay, well then your patient still feels like shit. So, okay, well you're not listening to your patient. And what are the guidelines state? Treat symptoms. Did you listen to the guidelines? No. Okay, why aren't you listening to the guidelines? So it's like, you have these two competing things, and well, you know, this this is where the craft of medicine has to come in, where an educated doctor has to come in. But this is a, a tremendous problem, and um, we have a lot of people in the TRT realm who think a specific dose is the dose for everybody, and they're a thousand percent wrong. It's one, not the way the drug was designed, and um, if our goal is to get better as a medical treatment, then we should be focusing on getting better and not listening to people who say one dose is better than the other because there's hyper and there are hypo responders. There's people who just don't respond to these drugs um, at a particular dose. And if you increase it, we increase it. So definitely take a look at these. Just, you know, do uh, in PubMed um, or whatnot, just do 600 milligram testosterone. And you're going to come up with all these different articles. And, and once you do that, then you're going to see, okay, wow, there's these there's different articles. And what we're being told by the industry is just not correct. And it's not how the drug works. And it's not how the treatment works. And especially when we're talking about specific segments of the population that need this for an extreme medical need, TBI and PTSD and depression, that sort of thing. It's designed as a, as a psych drug. So use it as a psych drug. Titrate it up to the highest you can go. That's well tolerated. And you don't have any crazy blood pressure or crazy problems. And go forth. This is Brad from TRT for Warriors. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. 
and you guys have a great rest of your weekend.